all right so very quick uh, review of resonance see resonance is when you have a circuit like this rlc circuit which you see the rlc circuit all the three elements are in series and the same current flows through them okay so the current which is flowing through them is ip okay ip and ip and this voltage which you apply is generally written as v not which is v maxima sin omega t right so this is your time dependent voltage all right and when you say that you know the the frequency of this ac signal okay which is called the driver frequency okay this has a frequency driver frequency and the circuit which is rlc circuit has something called as a natural frequency to it natural frequency okay when the driver frequency the driver is the ac voltage source when the driver frequency okay becomes equal to the natural frequency of the lcr series circuit natural frequency of lcr series circuit we say the condition is called as resonance okay now there are three ways to do a resonance like situation you can use a variable frequency source variable frequency source which means you you pick up this ac signal you change its the driving frequency so i can change the driving frequency uh, and make it equal to the natural frequency this is one way the second way is you vary the variable inductor okay so you can change the inductor also and i'll tell you why third is you can vary the capacitor also these three conditions if you do any one of them you can achieve resonance you know and math the mathematical explanation is very simple during resonance what happens during resonance xl is equal to xc which means there is no reactance in the circuit no reactance in the circuit so there is no reactance in the circuit at all in the circuit okay if there is no reactance in the circuit so these two the capacitor and the inductor which have reactances of xl and xc do not play any part in resonance and only r resistor is acting okay and if you write the expression of the current which you get that is given by v divided by under root of r square plus xl minus xc square now in order to get make when you how do you make xl is equal to xc this is the basic right xl is equal to xc see one so with the help of this you are able to calculate the natural frequency of the circuit so the natural frequency will come out to be 1 by under root lc because xl is equal to omega l and xc is equal to 1 upon omega c you can easily get the natural frequency of the circuit then what you do you pick up this ac signal source and you start you know changing the frequency of this ac signal source so you have a knob keep on changing at certain point the ac signal frequency will become equal to the natural frequency of the circuit which is this right this is one way but supposingly you don't want to touch the ac signal the driver frequency you don't want to touch it what do you do you you change l in such a manner that finally xl becomes equal to xc so you can vary inductor and such that xl becomes equal to xc without changing the frequency of the uh, ac signal right and then what do you do you keep the ac ac signal fixed so this is fixed and what do you do now you vary c keep on changing the value of c until you get xc is equal to xl in all three xc will become equal to xl but there are these are the three ways you can solve a resonance numerical okay three ways you can achieve resonance in lcr circuit now this was a very brief explanation of lcr circuit detailed explanation will follow before i solve the complete numerical what i generally do is i give the complete concept then solve the numerical give concept 
solve the numerical so that you learn more than just solving the numerical and then you gain nothing out of that so this is the only channel which gives detailed explanation instead of just focusing and throwing 30 second videos on your face that is not the idea the idea is that you really learn sitting at the comfort of your home without going anywhere the level of teaching you will find is better than your classroom or any other app or website or portal you see so so move forward and you will now let's start solving this problem and also work on the theory part of it thank you very much okay good morning so this question is from the chapter of alternating current the topic is lcr series circuit okay so what i've done is i've drawn an l the lcr series circuit and taken the values from here uh, which you can see and then but one of the most important thing that you need to notice is that you've applied an ac signal to this uh, circuit but the source of frequency uh, is variable right so the a variable frequency source has been applied generally in ac circuits you see 50 hertz but in lcr series uh, circuit questions you will find that the frequency which you apply to the a circuit the signal uh, frequency is generally variable because the whole experiment or the concept is based on variable frequency and then we will talk so what the way we'll approach this is we will do the numerical but we will also do some explanation so explanation will ensure that you understand what's happening okay now let's talk about the part number 1 part number 1 is what is the source frequency for which current amplitude is maximum and obtain the maximum value so first of all if you see this question you know you must understand that this question is essentially based on the concept of resonance and i will quickly tell you for part a obtain uh, you know what is a source frequency which means what should be the frequency of this signal 230 volt signal so that you get a maximum amplitude of the current so let me just tell you what happens in the resonance at the time of resonance so that you are able to understand you know i am not solving this immediately but giving you an explanation also so first of all concentrate on this graph and this is a practical graph if you see this graph okay this will help you understand what's happening so in our houses the televisions are there radio is there and when we are trying to adjust it we are able to listen to the music on the radio uh, you know at a certain frequency and if we change that frequency the signal becomes distorted so this is the graph i am referring to it's called a bell curve graph okay a bell curve graph is being referred to okay this is very symmetrical and this graph is what is happening is you're applying different frequencies okay so you are applying different frequencies to the circuit which is lcr circuit as shown above so this is a diagram of lcr series circuit lcr series circuit so what you do is you keep on changing the uh, frequency of this alternating current and this is either voltage or this is the current okay one and the same thing you can either measure the current or the voltage and on the x axis what you do you keep on changing the frequency of your ac signal of 230 volts which means sometimes you apply 5 hertz sometimes you apply 10 hertz and so on and so forth so you can apply many frequencies and and note the value of the uh, voltage or the current that is appearing you know in this circuit and i then what happens is at a certain frequency called as the resonance frequency the value of the voltage is highest that is the main emphasis this is the frequency okay f not some people call it fr here the value of the voltage or the current that you see in the circuit is maximum okay v maximum so the the signal which you get on the radio if you drive a car or if you are sitting with your parents in the car the at certain frequency the the signal becomes very large okay at this stage the circuit is said to be a resonant 
circuit. So if you get the maximum value of the uh, the, the clarity of the vol, you know, of the music, the amplitude goes up. It becomes very clear. Your circuit becomes a resonant circuit. Okay, and this is the point I am referring to. As a, so, you continue to change the frequency of your radio. You know, you increase it, you decrease it. You do listen to something, but the you know it's not clear. And at a certain frequency, it becomes very clear. That frequency. At, it, at which it becomes very clear and you get the highest value of the signal which is the voltage or the current is called the resonance frequency. Now if you go back to this question and we will talk about many such concepts. If you go back to this question you will notice what is the source frequency as with the current amplitude is maximum and obtain the so remember the maximum value is when the resonant frequency happens. And the maximum frequency or the maximum amplitude of the current, i.e. maximum, okay, maximum current, the condition for that is that the reactance offered by the inductor becomes equal to the capacitive reactance. So, essentially, if you know what is XL, when AC signal is applied to an inductor, the resistance offered to the AC signal by the inductor is called inductive reactance. Okay, so this is your inductive. It's a type of resistance which a res inductor gives to the AC signal. Inductive reactance. Okay, and then of course you can talk about the capacitive uh, resistance. So when capacitor is attached to an AC signal, it offers a capacitive signal, right? And in an AC circuit, a condition comes when the, the two become equal, which means, you know, at some frequency, and you know, what is the formula of, I'll just change this to XC. XL is given by omega L and XC is given by 1 by omega C. All right. So, this is resistor, this is L and this is your C. So, we have to write XL what is the condition for this maximum frequency maximum amplitude this frequency which we are referring to as the resonant frequency happens when xl is equal to xc which means when omega l is equal to 1 by omega c and omega square is equal to 1 by lc and omega is equal to 1 upon under root of lc it's a quick word on uh, the concept of tuning of the circuit. See, if you have an RLC circuit that you see in front of you as a diagram, this circuit responds to frequency. Okay, the circuit responds to frequency of the applied voltage signal. It responds to frequency of the applied AC voltage. Okay. Now, the response is very nice when at certain frequency called as resonance frequency, uh, you know, you, you adjust the AC source to that frequency. You will get a very nice response from this circuit. So, the RLC circuit, okay, any RLC circuit gives a response to the applied frequency of the AC signal. This response, the RLC response, it is called as an RLC response, okay, is best for a frequency called as a resonant frequency, resonant frequency. And this is a whole process, uh, you know, which most of the electrical and electronics engineering is based on the response of the RLC circuit to the applied frequency. And you find that the RLC circuit gives an excellent response when the frequency of the supplied signal is equal to the resonant frequency. And, and of course, the condition is XL becomes equal to XC. So, it is very important to understand that circuits respond to the frequency. If you change the frequency, they will provide poor response. So, the signal will go down when you listen to the FM radio. I hope this helps you understand articulate how the rlc circuit 
responds to different frequencies and the best response comes from the resonance condition where the frequency is such that xl is equal to xc and if i were to solve this looking at the values which are given in the question of 0.12 henry and so i can put the values of 0.12 henry and 480 nanofarads in this so this is 1 divided by uh, the value of uh, 0.12 henry 0.12 multiply by the henry's which are given i think it's 480 right 480 so let's put the value as 480 nanofarad which is 10 raised to power minus 9 and you can solve this this is 2 pi f and this is by the way omega r resonance this is very important to understand divided by you know 0 0.12 into 480 into 10 raised to power minus 9 and f r is equal to 1 upon 2 pi under root of 0 0.12 into 480 multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 9 it's in hertz at this frequency you will get the maximum current or the maximum voltage i will now go to the circuit part of it and explain you what exactly is happening at the condition called as the resonant so i will just add the word so this is the this is a bell curve okay bell curve it is symmetrical you can see both the sides the the response to changing frequency is same on both the sides you know the voltage and the current acquire same value whether the frequency is increased by certain amount on this side or this side the value of the voltage or the frequency remains the same it's symmetrical it's a bell curve remember that frequency versus voltage or frequency versus current now let me draw the diagram of the lcr circuit and tell you what equation you should always remember i told you i will not do the solution only but also tell you the uh, you know more concepts so, so that you are able to understand and use these to your advantage when solving other questions okay and and that is if you look into this problem you know let me draw the uh, circuit and show you what is the equation that you must know you know for an L. so you can get one marker saying write the equation of circuit at any frequency not necessarily resonance okay so if you draw the circuit quickly this is your uh, resistance this is your uh, inductor and this is your capacitor okay i'll just connect the circuit properly so that you know so this is your inductor i've completed it and this is the i told you the ac source is variable and you conduct this experiment with a variable frequency source the voltage is 230 in our case not necessarily it will be same in all the situations and then of course we will connect these so this is your rlc now the way it works is this voltage is given as v naught sine omega t for example right so the voltage that appears across so the current in all the elements is same okay this is not the condition of resonance but any frequency okay this is i which is entering and this is x l this is x c right we know that the capacitive reactance so the the way you write this is v naught so what we are doing is we are applying kirchhoff's voltage law to this circuit kvl so v naught sine omega t is given by what it is given by this is resistor so the voltage is i r some part of the voltage is given to the resistor some part of the voltage and mind you this voltage which i am writing across the inductor is a different type of voltage it is not identical to the voltage in the resistor it is in y axis so this voltage is in x axis okay so the voltage i am writing now is the y axis voltage so this is your l d i by dt this is the voltage 
I, what I am writing is called as a differential equation, first order only. You don't have to worry about it, but but do note the subtle points I am telling you. And then, of course, what you are writing is the voltage which appears across. So, you know, right, uh, the voltage across the capacitor. So, the voltage there, this is the, you know, expression for the capacitor. So, voltage can be written as Q by C. So, I will just add the Q by C here. Q by C. This is the equation which shows you and this of course is also on the y axis. If you if you not know this, please remember the voltage of the inductor and the capacitor is not in the same line as that. So, you, you must watch my video where I explained the concept of voltage triangle. I told you I will just not do the numerical but make you understand a lot of concepts which are associated with RLC circuit. So, we are learning the theory as well as, you know, the, the uh, mathematical part of the numerical together, okay. It's not a plain vanilla 30 second answer which is being thrown at you, okay. You don't learn anything out of that. The, okay, so one is of course the, so first thing is if you notice the emphasis of the first question is on the current, right, the current amplitude. Now, let's talk about the second part of the question. Alright, so the average power that you consume uh, in an RLC circuit with a phase difference of phi between voltage and inductor, sorry, voltage and current is given by this formula. So, this is the average power which we are referring to in the question. It's a average power you're consuming or the true power. Okay, so whenever the word average power you see, it is always referring to the true power, which means the resistive power or the power being consumed by the resistor is being referred to. All right, so let's talk about the concept for the part number B. Okay, so the part number B is essentially focused on the maximum value of average power. See, when, when, the, when you hear the word maximum power, okay, P maximum, which is being transferred by the AC signal, okay, how the AC signal can transfer the maximum power to this LCR circuit, okay. The way you do this is the maximum power, it is called as maximum power situation, maximum power transfer condition okay how and when, when the word power is being referred to what is being referred to is p max is actually the real power okay the real power or the true power true power which is being referred to which is the power being dissipated only across the resistor so p across the resistor the power across c and l which is a reactive power is to be ignored the maximum power is transferred by the AC signal to an LCR series circuit at the condition of resonance. So, again, the maximum power occurs at the condition of resonance and is given by... Alright, so let's talk about the concept for the part number B. Okay, so the part number B is essentially focused on the maximum value of average power. See, when, when, the, when you hear the word maximum power, okay, P maximum, which is being transferred by the AC signal, okay, how the AC signal can transfer the maximum power to this LCR circuit, okay. The way you do this is the maximum power, it is called as maximum power situation, maximum power transfer condition okay how and when, when the word power is being referred to what is being referred to is p max is actually the real power okay the real power or the true power true power which is being referred to which is the power being dissipated only across the resistor so p across the resistor the power across c and l which is a reactive power is to be ignored the maximum power is transferred by the AC signal to an 
एल सी आर सीरीज सर्किट एट द कंडीशन ऑफ रेजोनेंस सो अगेन द मैक्सिम पावर अकर्स एट द कंडीशन ऑफ रेजोनेंस एंड इज गिवन बाय आई आर एम एस सो आई आर एम एस स्क्वेर मल्टीप्लाई बाय आर दिस इज द पावर विच इज द मैक्सिम पावर विच इज सप्लाइड बाय द ए सी सिग्नल एंड द कंडीशन इज सेम एक्स एल इज इक्वल टू एक्स सी सो दिस इज द कॉन्सेप्ट इट इज कॉल्ड इज मैक्सिम पावर ट्रांसफर कंडीशन द सर्किट इज कंप्लीटली रेजिस्टिव एंड नो रिएक्टेंस इज प्लेइंग एनी रोल हेयर एंड द मैक्सिम पावर गेट्स ट्रांसफर सो पार्ट नंबर बी इज ऑन मैक्सिम पावर ट्रांसफर all right so let's focus our energy on solving the part b now and let's do some calculation the first step obviously is to calculate the value of i rms so let's start doing this right what is the current okay and i'm referring to the rms value of the current okay so you know the value of the uh, voltage which is given to you 230 volt variable frequency supply generally this value of 230 volt is the rms value let's assume this to be rms value and so 230 divided by the resistor which is given to be how much i think it's given to be around 24 ohms right so yes 23 ohms so let's put it as 23 ohms right so the rms current is given to be 10 amperes and therefore the in one cycle the power which you get is i rms square into r is equal to 10 square multiply by 23 is equal to 2300 watts all right let's focus on part c now and the question of part c is to find the frequency when the power transfer to the circuit is half the power at resonant frequency and what is the current amplitude at these frequencies so this situation is called as half power okay so the power which is highest at resonance now becomes half so we have to find the condition when the power becomes half so this is the way we do this see the maximum power you actually calculated supplied came out to be i square rms into r this was a part b which we solved right part b we have already solved But our what is our focus now? And this this happened when when omega is equal to omega r. Now the question is to find what is the current. Okay, what is the current when omega power is half the maximum power? So see that current when the power becomes half the maximum power that is given as I R M S divided by root. okay so this is the answer to part c this is the current at which the power becomes equal to p max divided by 2 okay and how did i calculate this because i know power is equal to i rm square and half of this will be p max into i rm s r m s square into r okay divided by 2 so i am writing this as okay this is equal to right this is equal to so p max divided by 2 is equal to i square rms into r by 2 is equal to i rms divided by root 2 into i rms by root 2 into r right so this is the power which is half the power of maximum at this current okay so i just derived it for you so whenever you are there they ask you to calculate at what current the power will become half calculate the i rms at the maximum power and divided by root 2 all right so the what are the frequencies at which uh, the power becomes half the maximum power we know the current we've already calculated so these are the frequencies okay these are the frequencies and how do you solve this see the impedance at maximum power is given by r so this is the condition of impedance is equal to resistance when you're looking for p max okay 
एंड वेन जेड इज इक्वल टू रूट टू टाइम्स आर ओके देन दिस इज अ कंडीशन ऑफ पी मैक्स बाय टू सो दिस करस्पॉन्ड्स टू आई आर एम एस एंड दिस करस्पॉन्ड्स टू आई आर एम एस बाय रूट टू वीव ऑलरेडी डन दैट सो इफ यू लुक इन टू दिस फॉर्मूला दिस इज द लोअर पार्ट ऑफ द फ्रीक्वेंसी वेर द पावर बिकम्स हाफ and the second frequency which is the upper range is the where the power becomes half so there are two places if i were to draw a graph you know something like a bell curve kind of graph let me just draw a graph of you know it this also looks like a bell curve of voltage but this is power versus frequency if i were to draw this graph it looks something like this and the this is your resonance frequency at which maximum power happens so this is your p max and then half of this you know if this is your 3 cm i will mark here is your half the power okay and for sim simple reasons the two sides are considered to be equal for practical purposes although they don't follow symmetry but when q generally is greater than 10 you will find that the symmetry holds true and both the sides are equal so for all practical purposes the consider the omega 1 is equal to omega 2 for the time being they follow symmetry so if you know the value if you go back to the question you know the value of resistance you know the value of inductor you know the value of capacitor substitute in this one and this one that's your those are the two frequencies called as cut off frequencies okay cut off frequencies where you will get power as half the maximum power i hope the second part uh, the you know of the part c is also clear to you right so this is related to uh, resonance but the frequencies are different and that there is a relationship between these two frequencies if you take omega 1 and omega 2 you know that omega 1 multiply by omega 2 under root is given by resonant frequency this you can always memorize this formula also as a shortcut so i hope you will be able to put the values and solve on your all right so let's talk about the last part of it which is a quality factor of the given circuit so so far what we have done is we've calculated the cut off frequencies just for your knowledge the cut off frequency you know is in a range and that range is called as a bandwidth so if i were to draw the diagram of cut off frequencies you know where the power becomes half and if this was you know hypothetically the graph and here the power is maximum one cut off frequency is here and the second cut off frequency is on the other side of the graph okay and they're equidistant from the resonant frequency which means this side is equal to this side right what happens is if you considered this this is your p max and this is your p max by 2 all right so the this versus power versus omega our question is what is the quality factor quality factor is given by omega resonance divided by the bandwidth what is the bandwidth this overall width of the and the frequency which we calculated just now is called the bandwidth of the resonant circuit now it is important to understand this because a lot of students have no clarity on this concept this concept is the most important concept see any lcr circuit any lcr series circuit and we discussed tuning before this i gave you the example of fm radio allows a certain frequencies which which is here which is the which is the range called as a bandwidth okay so it is tuned to certain frequencies and obviously the best signal comes here the best signal comes here but the tuning uh, uh, part of the circuit can select a range of frequencies that range is the bandwidth okay if you have a narrow bandwidth you know for example the graph now becomes sharper you know it becomes like this okay now what do you find the bandwidth so highest power has gone up okay so the highest power has gone up okay and the 
half power you know is occurring at these frequencies and you can see the bandwidth now is narrower than the previous situation so if this was a bandwidth earlier the new bandwidth is only this much i will just show you the new bandwidth right in such a case what we say is that the circuit is capable of selecting a very narrow band of frequencies the circuit is able to select very narrow uh, band of cutoff frequencies and therefore the quality factor increases okay so this circuit has lower quality factor but if you see the width it is so high right the bandwidth is so high and so that means you know the higher is the bandwidth lower is the quality factor lower is the bandwidth higher is the quality factor this is the way these two are linked to each other so this concept of quality factor and bandwidth should also be clear in your mind and you will also hear the words like selectivity right selectivity means the the capability of the lcr circuit to select a certain set of frequencies within the cutoff right every circuit is uh, tuned to accommodate a certain frequency bandwidth narrower is the bandwidth higher is the quality factor the sharper is the graph okay because it can only uh, accept the acceptor frequencies are very very low now let's write the formula of the bandwidth which is straight forward if you write wr is your resonance frequency anyway which is known to you right this is known to you this is w2 minus w1 where this is your upper uh, cutoff frequency uh, and sorry this is not the upper uh, yeah this is it and the second is here right so this is omega 1 so omega 2 minus omega 1 if you solve this right what you get is 1 by under root of lc which is this and we just solved for uh, the frequencies right if you subtract them what you will get is r by l if you solve this it all right so once you solve this this is the final expression you get okay and you can see quality factor is given by 1 by r under root of l by c so all the three values are known to you you can go back to the question put the value and you will get the answer here okay you will get the answer the point is you must understand quality factor quality factor you must be able to articulate the concept of bandwidth you should be able to talk about selectivity which i have already explained in my video all right so my idea is that explanation is a major chunk of the work i could have solved this question in two lines but i chose to first give you an explanation of the concept and then you know it's all mathematical putting the values and solving it so thank you very much for your time today watch my playlist with 127 videos on alternating current almost every concept is discussed in brief and some obviously are very long explanations which will help you score high in the examination thank you very much